on. We are going to start our factoring technique by looking for the greatest common factor and then we're going to apply this greatest common factor to factor more elaborate uh, uh, polynomials by grouping which is an extension of this uh, of this greatest common factor. Well number one, number one, how do we identify the greatest common factor? So here's my advice every time you're working with polynomials. Number one thing you want to do is see whether you have a greatest common factor. Forget about whether or don't don't care about whether it's a two-term polynomial, three-term polynomial, four-term polynomial polynomial, it doesn't matter. Number one thing we do is whether we have a GCF. Well, so there's a couple of uh, things to put into consideration here. Number one, it's useful to look at the smallest of the, co of the numerical coefficients. Let me highlight that, even though it's a bold case here, let me highlight. Okay, look at the smallest of the coefficients and well, the rest of the coefficients might be multiples of it. If it is, well, we, we, we are, we, we, we're, we're doing fine. It's going to be a really nice way to factor it out. So that's for the numerical coefficients and then the second part is the variables. We are going to factor the lowest power of the variable that appears in all terms. All right. So let's look at one example. Well, actually, many, many examples. Okay, the, a very simple example, 4a plus 8. So we want to factor out the greatest common factor here. Number one, let's identify the smallest of the coefficients, and I'm going to highlight it, all right? The rest of the numerical values hopefully are multiples of this smallest coefficient, and in fact, 8 is a multiple of 4, isn't it? That means, in this case, that um, we can factor out the 4 and open parentheses and we will be left with the quantity a plus the number that multiplied with 4 equals to 8, which is 2, right? And that's one very simple case in which we will factor the greatest common factor. All right. Um, let's see. So for letter B, <clears throat> again, we have a combination of letters of, numer of numerical coefficients and letters that represent variables. What we need to do here is identify the smallest of the coefficients, which, which one is it in this case? Three, Three right? Okay, the, the remaining coefficients, six and 18, and 18, are they multiples of three? Yeah. Okay, that means we can factor out a three. Okay, so let's go for it, factor out the three. All right, now we're not going, this time we're not going to, to factor out just a numerical uh, coefficient. We will also factor a variable because in this case all terms contain numbers and variables as opposed to letter A. They're just con not all terms contain variables. So um, in this case, we're going to factor x to some power. Well, we need to identify the smallest power that we see in all the terms. So we have x to the sixth power, x to the third, and x to the two. Which one is the lowest power? Okay, so let's factor out the two, okay? Open parentheses, and then numerical coefficients. What number times three equals to 18? Six. Six, okay. Now, here is a thing, careful with the variables. So I'm gonna raise x to what power? Okay, x to what power times two equals to six? I hear three, I hear four. Okay, so what do we do with the exponents when we multiply the variables, by the way? Add them, right? So, okay, what number added with two equals to six? Four, so that's why we, it is four. Those of you who say three, maybe you were thinking of multiplying the exponent. No, we don't multiply the exponents here. Well, there's another operation in which we do multiply the, uh, the exponents. In this case, that is when we have the power of another power. All right, now, that's a plus. Okay, what number times three equals to three? That's just one, and actually it's an indivisible one that we don't need to write. How about powers of x? So out of three powers of x, we factor two. How many are we going to be left with? 
one, right? Okay, do we need to write that one? No need, okay. Minus, okay, because that term is minus, okay. What number times three equals to six? Two, okay? And well, do we write any, any variable x's? Not in this case, because we already factor out the two of them. So close parentheses and we're good to go. All right. <clears throat> let's, let's go over letter C. All right, so for letter C, how about you try letter C? I'll give you a couple minutes and see what you get. All right, let's have a look at letter C. So, well, in this case, again, uh, we're going to have a look at the coefficients of the variable, of the coefficients of the terms. That is, negative 10, 5, and negative 15. Identify the smallest of them, and, and if possible, highlight it. Well, that's a 5. Hopefully, the other coefficients are multiples of that number. And in this case, well, we have 10 and 15 that are, in this case, multiples of them. That means we can factor out uh, the number five, and I'm gonna leave a space for something, you'll see. Okay, now, out of all the powers of the variable, so in this case we have x to the nine, x to the fifth, and x to the second power. So we, are, we can factor out the smallest power of the variable, which in this case, x to the second power. All right, here is the thing. If we just leave, if we just do the factoring like this, we are going to leave the leading term with a negative sign. And even though, even though it's, not, it's not incorrect to leave the negative inside, preferably we don't want the first term after opening parentheses to be a negative quantity. So you might want to factor the negative as well. All right? Now, five times what number equals to 10? Two, okay, x to what power? Out of nine powers of x, I took out three, how many? Are we, are we going to be left with? Seven. Seven. All right. Okay. Uh, okay, because we factor the negative, how do we get back to positive? Well, by doing another negative. And since we already factored a five, we don't need to have that five again. So that's x to the third power in this case because three plus two equals back to five. And lastly, minus, which is in this case actually plus, because negative times a positive, it's going to be equal to, what's that? Um, negative, back to negative. And well, in this case, what number times five equals to 15? Three. But in this case, no more powers of x, because we, have, we factor out the two powers of x over here, no need to write anything, any, any more powers here. And that's final answer. All right, letter letter D. This one is gonna let a little a little bit. No, not letter D. Actually, it's gonna be letter D. Okay, let's have a look a look at letter D. So letter D. We, for letter D, we have more than one variable at the same time, but that still uh, we still take into account one power at a time and coefficients at a time. And again, so first of all, identify the coefficients. So in the smallest of them, in this case, is the number 17. So the other coefficient, 34, is that a multiple of 17? Yes, it is, right? 17 times two is 34. All right, so factor, factor the 17. <coughs> okay, in this case, we will, have to, we will have a look at the powers of the variables one at a time. So we have x to the third power and x to the fourth power. How many x's can we factor out in this case? Three. Three, all right. X to the third, what about the y's between y squared and, oh, it's also y squared, right? So we factor the y, the, all of the y squareds, right? Open parentheses, and well, here, 17 times one, well, uh, it's a one that we're not going to write. And in this case, uh, how about we, okay, uh, we took we took three powers of x, okay, there's no more powers of x, and also there's no more powers of y, so that's just gonna be reduced to, to one, right? Minus two times, because two times 17, and well, x, x to what power? Well, 
three powers, we took out three powers out of the four, we're going to be left with one power, we don't need to write that one power, and because we factor the two powers of y, we don't need to write anything else, and we're done with this one, right? All right, let's, let's look at letter E. Okay, so letter E is going to be a little tricky because what the pattern we have been following so far, it's not going to work the way it worked for exercises A through D. Okay, again, let's, I, let's, let's look at the, at the numerical coefficients first and look at the smallest of them. In this case, it's the number 6. However, the other coefficient, which is 15, is it a power of 6? Is it a multiple of 6? So we may not be able to factor out the 6 in this case, all right? So we will have to take a different approach at this time. What we do in this case is prime factor those coefficients to, in order to determine what do they have in common, all right? For example, the number 6 will be factored as uh, 3 times 6, and the number 15, 3 times 5. What do these two numbers have in common? Three. Three. Three, three times three. Three times two, right? It's three times two. Yes, correct. Three times two. That's correct. All right. And still, well, I mean, still, the common factor is going to be the three. All right. So let me highlight that common factor of three. Oops. That's not a highlighter. Okay. This one is highlight three. And that'll be, uh, okay, so factor out the 3, and then we are going to factor factors of A and factors of B. All right, let's look at the different powers of A and B available. So we have three powers of A here, and we have two powers of A. How many powers of A do we factor? Two. two. And how many powers of B do we factor, considering we have 2 here and 3 there? 2 also. So that's going to lead us with, well, if we factor the numerical factor of 3, that's going to lead us, leave us with this 2 inside of the parentheses and 1 power of A. And then minus, if we factor the coefficient 3, we're left with 5. And that's going to be... Um, uh, one power of B left with it, all right? And that's our final answer here. Of course, so what are we doing essentially? We're doing the backwards process of the distributing property. That's what the, um, that's what the factoring polynomials is about. All right? <clears throat> Let's see. What is that? Uh, because if we factor the three from this from this second term, so, 3 times what number equals to 15? The 5, right? And the b, because if we factor 2 powers of b, then we're left with 1 more because we had 3. All right? Okay, let's see what's next. All right, in a similar way. So... For letter F, again, let's let's start by identifying the coefficients. And again, well, the coefficients are negative 3, 2, and negative 5. The smallest of the coefficients happens to be the number 2. However, when we look at the remaining coefficients, negative 3 and 5, none of those are actually multiples of 2. So in this case, we don't, we're not going to do any factoring around the coefficients. Now we're going to move to the next level, the variables. So we're going to have, we have a combination of variables x and y. However, uh, let's see what can we factor. Well, for the x's, we have x cubed, x squared, and x to the first power. We are going to factor the lowest power, which is in this case x. And for the y's, notice the y appears in all terms of the first power, so that is common to all of them. But also, I'm going to factor the negative because, again, we don't like these negatives uh, as the first term inside of a group or inside of parentheses. So that's going to leave us with 3x squared and then plus 2x and then minus 5, right? 
So again, that's uh, you can always verify your result by doing the distributive property, distributing the negative x, and give you the same last answer. Yes? Oh, the signs, right? So that has to be um, minus and this a plus, right? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's look at letter G. Letter G, well, number one, coefficients H, 2, and 4. The smallest of the coefficients is the number 2, right? Of the number 2. But this time, the other coefficients, 8 and 4, are multiples of, of 2. So in this case, that means we can factor out the 2. Now, no factoring a negative because we already have our little term to be a positive quantity. Now, let's see. Notice all three terms contain n's. However, not all the terms contain the letter m. So in this case, we won't be able to factor out any powers of m, only powers of n. In this case, well, we have n to the third power, n to the first power, and another n to the first power. That means we can factor out as much as an n to the first power. That's going to lead us with 2 times what equals to 8? Well, that's 8. M, N squared. And the reason why we get that N squared, it's because, number one, if we factor 1N out of the 3, we're left with 2 of them. And then minus. We no longer write the 2. That's going to be simply M squared and no more Ns because we already factored the N. And 2 times 2 equals to 4. Yes. Uh, so that, why isn't it not 4 and x squared? 4, oh. Yeah. I four, oh, that's a 4. Thank you. 4. Right? Yeah. I, I think I was still looking at the original term. All right. Letter H and I, even though they look a little weird, so check this out. Very often times, well, actually, letters H and I are going to prepare us to what we're going to do next with uh, with the factor by grouping here well so now check this out notice no i know what you might be thinking you might want to distribute the two over here and the three a over there no the the purpose is to factor out actually to compress into the product of two factors or more not to distribute it and obtain even more terms no that's not our purpose all right for this special case, which again, it's going to get into the factor by grouping. So notice what I'm highlighting, x minus 5, x minus 5. Okay, so these two terms have an x, a power of x minus 5 common to both. So this is what we're going to do. What we're going to do is factor out that x minus 5 times Two plus three a. Typically, this could be a little bit confusing, and the reason to that that's because we have two terms in the one that we have highlighted in yellow. And I agree, uh, those are two terms. But you could have two terms inside a parenthesis, three terms, four terms, five terms, as many terms as you want. However, because they're grouped in parentheses and they're multiplying, those five terms or seven terms, in our case only two terms, we treat them like just one single factor. To have a better visual of this, check this out. So, this is the equivalent of factoring two, so two x for instance, well two, let me, two big a, no not a, two x plus three a x. What do they have in common here? Notice the x is common to both. And that equals to x that multiplies this um, 2 plus 3a. All right. And let me, let me do the same highlighting. So you can see the reminiscence between the two processes here. All right. 
So we're factoring the GCF. However, this common factor has more than one term. But again, even though it's two terms, we treat it like one single factor. And it will be exactly the same thing for the next, for the next example. So number one, let's highlight what we have in common. Notice we have a lot of factors, parentheses terms. But do you notice how this x squared plus 5? It's also here, x squared plus 5, why rather? So, but be careful here because in the second term, the second term has one invisible one multiplying. And it's important to keep that in mind when we factor that GCF. Uh, so, okay, highlight the GCF and highlight the GCF. <coughs> So the GCF, which is x, uh, x squared plus 5y times the quantity 7x minus 1. So essentially, it's like distributing this, seven, this x squared plus 5y as a, as a one single factor, one single quantity times 7x is going to give us that first term. And this whole thing as one factor times a negative one is going to give us that negative right here. All right? 